In this video, I'll show you how to use the Skeleton Setup tab, one of the components of the Figure Setup tools for DAS Studio, in order to create a skeleton for your model. In the viewport, you see the model I'll be working with. I'll start by clearing the scene. Navigate to the Geometry list, right click, choose Add Geometry. In the dialog that is presented, I can navigate to and select the geometry that I'll be using for the figure. Click Open, and I get OBJ Import Options, so choose how I'd like DAS Studio to import this geometry. I'll be using Poser Scale. One thing to note here, if the figure is going to be used in DAS Studio and in Poser, I need to use Poser Scale for the scale of my model, so that the OBJ is at the same scale as the CR2 when it is exported. Go ahead and click Accept. And in the geometry list, I have an item representing the OBJ that I selected. If I select that, I can see the groups in the group list for that geometry. Groups are an essential part of creating a figure for DAS Studio and for Poser. Now I need to create the bones for my skeleton. I can go about that a couple different ways. I can right click on the skeleton, and add a child bone add a bone sequence, or I can drag and drop the item from the geometry list onto the geometry for the skeleton. And skeleton setup will create bones corresponding with the names of groups in that OBJ. Now that I have these bones, I can drag and drop to create the hierarchy. This particular model has 15 bones that all start with the segment name and end with a number. Instead of dragging and dropping to create the structure with these, I can go about that in a slightly easier way. I'll go ahead and remove these, select the gills, right click, select add bone sequence. In this dialog, I type in the common portion of the name in this field the beginning number of the sequence, the ending number of the sequence, and I'm going to use this option, apply zero padding to suffix, to add zeros to the left side of single digit numbers. For propagation, as the numbers increase, I'd like the bone to be created as a child of the one prior to it, so I'll choose cascading. Click accept. If I expand the hierarchy, I can see that each of those bones have been created. If I expand the geometry item for one of the bones I created previously, you can see that the geometry is already assigned. Here is the zero index referencing this OBJ, and it tells me it's using the head group from that OBJ. I can change that if I like by simply dragging and dropping. The new bones that were created by using add bone sequence don't automatically have their geometries assigned. I've merely created the bones. I can quickly make the associations between the groups and the bones by selecting the OBJ, dragging it and dropping it onto the geometry item for the skeleton. Now each of those bones will have been assigned. Since I'm done with this portion of the interface, I'll go ahead and collapse that side of it so I have a little more room to work. If I double click this vertical bar, it'll adjust the width of this column to the width that's required in order to see all of its contents. Now that I have my bones, geometries assigned to them, and the hierarchy built, I need to make sure that I set up the welding and the rotation order for these bones. First, I'm going to set up welding. Select the top item, hold shift, select the bottom item to multi-select. If I right click in the weld column, I'm given options for how I'd like to weld. I'd like them all to weld to their parents. 
There we go. Now I'd like to change the rotation order of these bones. When setting the rotation order, the first axis is the twist axis. This is the bone that goes lengthwise through the geometry. The second axis should be the axis that is least likely to reach 90 degrees of rotation. The third axis is the axis that's most likely to reach 90 degrees of rotation. Because of the orientation of this model, for us, that's ZYX. Notice that each of these have been updated. Another option I have here, when I right click, is the ability to select which joint parameters I'd like created for that bone. Because the gills is the base of this figure, I don't need twisting or bending on that bone. I do want to keep the smooth zone so that I can adjust for scaling. Go ahead and click Accept. And I'm pretty much set up. If I wanted to, I could also select the first and last bone here in the tail and choose Create IK Chain. Type in the name of my chain and select this option to include all of the bones between the two that I've selected. Daz Studio doesn't use IK Chains currently, but I'm creating this content to be used in Poser as well. So I'm going to go ahead and accept this and you can see that it's added a tail IK chain to this figure. With this option checked, it indicates that when the CR2 is written, this tail IK chain will be on. I can deselect that to turn it off. If I expand this, I can see all of the bones in the IK chain and their respective weights. To finish creating the figure, if I come up to the Options menu and select Create Figure, my figure is then created in the viewport. If I mouse over my figure, I can see that Bounding Box indicates that there are several groups here. This is exactly what I wanted. I can now go up to the Tools menu and select the Joint Editor tool and begin editing my joints. We'll cover that in another tutorial.